Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen, the Lone Wolf Run. My name is Saiken and I'm trying to beat the game on the highest difficulty, Legendary Iron Man, with only one soldier permission. It's been a couple of weeks uh, in-game uh, in grinding. We're <coughs> Excuse me. In the year 2037 already, so it's uh, almost yeah, th uh, two full years, uh, more than two full years uh, in, and basically what I've done is I've invested quite a bit of the intel that we've gotten. Uh, we got uh, some, uh, we got some uh, contact reduction, <coughs> and I made my my, uh, my way all the way up. To here, Eastern Europe, put radio tower here, and got ourselves to North America. Now we already lost Western uh, Europe to I think it was a terror attack, uh, but we uh, cleared the way to North America, and that cleared our way to the next mission, which is the Codic Brain Coordinates mission. And I thought <coughs> we'll give uh, we'll give. Um, our prime soldier, Hawkbite, another try. He has leveled a bit since. And we're going to see if his solo mission capabilities are becoming better. The last time we lost about, I think, close to 20 hit points as we were going through the first mission. This mission here is going to be a bit more difficult going to face a few chrysalids, we're going to face a gatekeeper and we're maybe even going to face an avatar depending on whether or not uh, that one spawns. We're definitely facing cord uh, codices so it's a typical uh, mission, not that easy but it will be a good test for us where we stand and how difficult the future missions are going to be. And there we go. Let's land and get this party going. Enemy is on high alert, okay. It really doesn't matter. Well, here we go. Beautiful part is... We <laughs> could already traversed the entirety of the landscape. We know there is some high ground here and here thanks to our incredibly long ranged movement. I don't want to over stress the movement piece or end up pulling multiple packs. So let's do some sort of moderate movement here. And that's actually dangerous because we do have two specters. Both of them theoretically could um, try to clone us. They are also immune to our Bladestorm attack. So it's a good test for us. And elite specters also have incredible amounts of hit points. It's a good test for us to make sure that we can get far enough away luckily we do have this wonderful long-ranged movement so it's gonna be a bit of hit and run And of course, the Chosen joins us. Whom are we fighting? Ooh, that's going to hurt. Shit, that's bad. <laughs> He's immune to melee. Uh, this is really bad. That's gonna be a long, brutal fight. Okay, well... I, I need to think how we're going to kill him. Maybe we're not killing him. Uh, I don't even know if we need to kill everyone. It's essentially just going to the... Uh, go to the root 
uh, do it to the origin. These here are chrysalid positions. That's five chrysalids. Yeah, we're going to take some hits. That's the part about the mission which is a bit more difficult. We're moving back in. I want to continue focusing on the same specter. Because that way we can kill him next turn. It is disoriented. And this here should be far enough away. We can see there's always room for even more movement. Like, although we are moving incredible distances, it, I can still see how it's even better to move further than that. So we're going to see spectral zombies. There we go. He summons two spectral zombies. Three, actually. Luckily, they trigger Bladestorm. And once we have more focus, we will be able to one-shot them. Now it's a 50-50. Unfortunately, Bladestorm doesn't provide uh, automatic focus. Yeah, so he will... Oh, what? There's the Spectral Rupture. Oh, it's a bit dangerous. Uh, interesting. So that's one down. We're slowly but surely getting them. Uh, the second Spectre is still pretty healthy. Gotta need to do... Uh, to, uh, to attack him for a few more rounds, probably three hits as well. Yeah, the problem is... Oh, there are even lost. Interesting. Okay, no, the problem is, even though our individual attack is dealing a lot of damage, the Templar class predominantly excels in their defensive ability. In terms of offensive abilities, he is okay, but certainly not like out outstanding. If I would compare him, for instance, to a Ranger, Ranger has way more burst potential. But at the end of the day, it'll still get the job done. We just probably need a few extra turns. There we go, double movement. And there's the Lost Swarm, which might even help us. It is 
so oh wait we don't we we can't automatically kill them never mind let's first and foremost get the specter down and hit the zombie at the same time Alright, I'll leave everyone here to deal with themselves. We are not nicely moving away to here. So the Andromedon has a pretty solid gun. We gotta be a bit careful that he's not hitting us. Yeah, we're dodging so much damage by just being extremely nimble and moving out of their range. More zombies. This is going to be an interesting mission. Because we're going to see so many zombies at the same time. As well as losts. That's probably their only chance of preventing my movement by simply blocking all of the tiles. Luckily our focus is now high enough so we can one-shot most of them. Very nice. Okay, the Spectre. Spectre should still stand there and we can finally kill it. There we go. Good. Our focus is f filled up. I'll just position ourselves over here. I'm absolutely not afraid about uh, the lost ones. We can yeah, kill them with Bladestorm. Like, that's not an issue. The Andromedon might be more of an issue. So we're going to focus on this guy next. Matter of fact, letting the lost live is more uh, is probably not the worst idea, because some of them will focus on the Andromedon as well. The lost have a weird targeting mechanism. It's mostly driven through who's closest to them, as you can see.
but XCOM seems to be slightly preferred, kind of in case of doubt. XCOM agents are getting attacked. Very nice. That was a pretty solid hit. Again, we're just moving out of range. I'm kind of changing sides from left to right and right to left. Mainly so I'm always kind of dragging the lost back into the enemies. That way they can kill one another. Also hitting reasonably hard, even. It's probably not going to kill him. Well, it is. Not too bad. Okay. I am going to parry. Because the one hit from the shell will be parried and everything else essentially will be a blade stone kill. Just thinning the ranks a little bit and improving our damage output. Because now blade stone will trigger and blade storm just essentially is as much damage as our normal attack. The Andromedon shows us pretty pretty nicely where the next pack is going to be located. It just moves there so we can follow. And it feels this year is going to be more and more a slugfest. So yeah, with the Blade Storm, the Templar definitely excels at damage, specifically against many smaller, weaker opponents, like we currently have in the setup. Just the amount of retaliations like Bladestorm hits that uh, he's getting in is adding up. That here in itself was 48 points of damage plus the 12 uh, against the uh, shell. So we're looking at 60 damage. Essentially 5 kills here right, right away. Okay. Could have summoned. Let's double check that. Could have summoned. A ghost up here. I'm just going to parry for now. We're going to move back and summon the ghost. If we do have the opportunity to get the ghost right away, that'll be helpful. This is helpful as well. Chrysalid just needs to move a tiny bit. Oh, 
All right, moving up here. Should have probably positioned myself here. That would have even been easy to get all of the focus back. Yeah, too bad. Good, we're positioning ourselves next to one another. And just end the turn. Unfortunately, this focus here will disappear. The good part about the Chosen is they attract the Chrysalids and get them out of hiding. Generally the Chosen act as a really nice distractor. Yeah, he might, he might be a little bit more careful in hitting this guy because he has Spectral Rupture on him. And an explosion would be really bad. Ah, luckily he missed. That's good. Let's get a bit of distance between us. And this chosen, uh, and this chosen zombie, rather. There we go. Nice little increase in damage. And we're moving. Good. We will claim this world in the name of the elders. So we're almost filled up with um, with focus again. The zombies at this point really don't mean anything to us. Specifically, since we get two blade storm attacks. Now that the ghost is here, we're getting a lot better. Even the ghost can one-shot them, and if uh, we just keep on standing next to one another, there isn't much that they can do. Almost the rest of the map is probably littered with chrysalids. We've seen that there were five of them, so we're going to slowly start taking one of them at a time. Moving in. We'll 
There's our maximized focus. And this is essentially a dead chrysalid. He'll get two attacks. And we're going to continue eradicating the others as well. So far, Flawless Mission, uh, Saiken, or uh, Hogbite here himself, has immunity to poison. We know one chrysalid was here, another one was over here. Moving in, creating the opportunity to get a little bit closer. Four more chrysalids, and we definitely need to deal with the warlock as well. Probably the by far most annoying uh, thing for him is he's immune to melee attacks, so I'm already planning to completely use uh, the psionic attacks that we do have in order to deal with him. They will get one attack off, but we do have reflect as well as defensive chances for each of those attacks. Uh, unless we're waiting, and very, very, very slowly progressing, which I don't see the necessity to do that right away, um, we, they will get a few spring attacks on, on us. But like I said, we're immune to poison. Do have a really solid chance of um, of interrupting them, parrying even deflecting. And a few more zombies. So one of the things that we can't do is run away from uh, the codices. Their teleportation range is uh, larger than the whole battlefield, so that's a fight which we effectively need to take. Also, um, simply standing next to them doesn't really do a hell lot due to their teleportation abilities. The only time that they actually walk and could trigger a blade storm is when you detect the pack for the very first time. I don't want to use our attacks on uh, them. This here would would be good to to uh, part both of them. That'll essentially create a few copies. Question is, do we want to have this, those many copies? Probably not. Let's just stay, uh, try to stay with as little... Oh no, oh no, oh no. Ah, that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. I really did not want to use his focus, the focus of the ghost. I guess there is a positive. He triggered the chrysalid and thus take most of the most of the heat. This here could be a single kill and then essentially moving away. Okay, I do have an idea.
Let's take the fight somewhere else. And we just need line of sight and then we can attack the two here. I think this is too good of a chance to not use it. Essentially a two for one. There we go. Good. Moving up here means we're definitely going to get hit by a psionic bomb. But that's okay. I don't mind that. Because there is no weapon that could uh, that could malfunction. So the reason why I didn't want to use the focus is every single point of focus weak, permanently weakens the ghost. I wanted to use all three focus for basically mental attacks against the warlock. I am wondering where the Codex has gone to. But you know, whenever you wonder, uh, whenever you wonder where something has gone to in XCOM, there's always the slight possibility that you're simply going to pull even more. That way, you don't need to feel so bad for not knowing where the enemy originally went. Because now you need to deal with a whole new set of enemies. Against uh, the codices, there is the only option is really a hit and run tactic. Can't just stand there. That's the spectral rupture zombie. Gotta be a bit careful. I think the AI definitely has a bit of a problem dealing with our ability to move that far. This here is a two for one kill again. Or let me say we killed one and unfortunately minimum damage so that we're creating two codices again. Might be the right time to simply parry. We're going to get a psionic bomb anyways. Just a bit afraid about the zombie up there. But we can't dodge them forever. We could. But it, it would make things a lot more difficult by just running away. There's the psionic bomb I was predicting. And this guy did not teleport, which was a big, big mistake. Got a free kill. And of course, we're getting some additional spectral zombies. That's the one that has self-destruct on it. It's probably going to use it. Oh, we're immune to 
I th I always uh, thought for some reason that that explosion um, counts as a psionic explosion. Now that I know that we're immune against it due to fortress, um, I really couldn't care less about the zombies. I really couldn't care less about the zombies. So far, flawless mission. Haven't even received damage. Good, we're moving to here. And there we go. Nice. So I think we still have two more chrysalids uh, underground. There's definitely a gatekeeper and there is uh, the warlock. Which I secretly hope we don't need to kill in order to finish the mission. But yeah, you know, we probably will. All right, we're scouting a little bit and mainly are trying to trigger a chrysalid or two. Ooh, look at that. Found one. Templars moving in. Nice little hit. Perry. Moving close so that any movement would trigger additional blade storm attacks. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. The Battle Brothers have just decided to kill the Chrysalid. Really solid positioning so that all of the Chrysalids die before they can even take a hit. I don't know if you appreciate that sort of gameplay, but that's very tactically uh, tactical positioning gameplay. Uh, probably not everyone's type of T, but it's a showcase. Like we wouldn't need forty nine hit points, right? So by definition, if even if we only had twelve, like the ghost, um, we don't even need the dodge that we currently do have. We are pretty fine the way that we currently are. This is more a showcase of how a Templar can successfully move and act. Those are a bit more tricky. Unfortunately, we did not get a blade storm attack off of um, off on the gatekeeper. Yeah, it's quite clear we need to hit and run this. Uh, we we could stand here. We could stand here. Uh, 
All of those would die with one hit. And we could parry his melee attack. Let's try that. I think uh, I know the AI well enough so that we could actually pull this one off. I'm going to pull the ghost a little bit back. All of the chrysalids will attack us. We're going to blade storm every single one of them. Got enough damage to do that. The gatekeeper will try to melee attack us in order to leech some life. We can block that and give him an extra attack as well. The reason why I decided to do that is it just speeds up the process. The safer way would be to yeah, move far, far back. And then simply try to re-engage. But maybe they have reburrowed, uh, that is possible. Danger here is uh, the thing could use gateway. And we're not immune to gateway. Of course. The one thing that we're not immune against, the one risk where I say, oh, it's actually going to be a risk. Of course, that's exactly what it's going to do. Warlock's trying to mind control. We're immune to that, so not much happening. Good, before we're going to deal with that again. We're moving a little bit further away. I miffed that we lost some hit points because I felt so far I managed to to not get into any trouble. Yet then the first time where it was sort of a 50-50, of course, the AI used the one ability to damage us. So Spectral Zombies are not going to be an issue. I think the Codex is the last enemy besides the Gatekeeper. And then it's simply the Chosen, which is going to be a bit more difficult. There we go. Good, it teleported up here. We are following it. And if it does not teleport again, it'll automatically die if it just moves away. There is a chance for it, but it might as well teleport, yeah. Sonic Bomb. Self-commander, let no more perish in vain. 
Good. Hogbite killed. And we're going to parry just in case. Just for the unlikely case uh, that the gatekeeper is rolling around here and taking a shot with its eye gun. No, instead it's using gateway again. Without hitting anyone. Good, so this is a tough nut to crack. He's back to seven armor, which means our strikes deal five points of de uh, five points of damage, which isn't enough to really hurt it. So we're going further back. We will eventually kill it next turn by moving there, hitting it once, and then waiting for our blade storm attack to hit. I'm not sure if the ghost is not immune. It doesn't have fortress, so it's not immune to explosions. So maybe we'll need two rounds because I don't want the, that when, as soon as uh, the gatekeeper explodes, uh, that the ghost takes uh, five or six points of damage. I need him fully healthy and able to withstand a shot of the rifle of the Chosen. Good thing is, the enemy seems to not use Overwatch when you're that far away. To be honest, I'm also not 100% sure if, if a Gatekeeper can Overwatch. I think it can't. Ooh, that's a dangerous position to be in. I have no other choice. The gatekeeper was hiding quite well. I'm surprised that we haven't figured out his position. So gatekeeper will take one attack. I feel a bit cheated as, um, as this guy was getting closer. We have the exact same problem as before. The gatekeeper is not in kill range yet. 
gotta move away. I'm almost sorry for dragging it out, but I'm not doing that on purpose. I want to make sure that we keep as many hit points as possible on the ghost. I want. I don't want to risk to stand next to the gatekeeper and then get another gateway. Because that's the only attack which can actually hit us. And six points of damage is plenty. I think the gatekeeper is standing right here. Good. Now we can stand right next to it. Unfortunately, it's stunned for for a bit. But now we can finally stand next to it. And next turn we can kill it. If it wouldn't be stunned, we would kill it either way. Yeah, that's another thing for the Templar, which the Templar is really not doing so well against um, obsessive amounts of armor. Can't really deal with that, because he does not have any Shredder ability by himself. So both Sectopods and uh, Gatekeepers have an inherent advantage. I mean, they can't really hurt us. But unless we're, for instance, triggering a self-detonation that then uh, reduces the armor, like it like just happened, which was uh, two points of shredder damage. Yeah, we're, we're just not dealing enough damage. I mean, problem with... Uh, uh, problem with uh, seven points of armor is you're ending up even if you deal absolute maximum amounts of damage and have maximum focus you can deal 12 points of damage that by the way is already with the damage improvement for all plasma weapons um, and since the fists of the templar don't get a separate damage improvement that's all you get like it's not gonna be better it's not going to get better than 12 I've tried to find ways, but to my understanding, there aren't any. So, seven points of uh, armor essentially means that uh, you're dealing at best five points of damage with every single hit. Yeah, and if something has 30 hit points, like the gatekeeper, that's going that's just a long fight. Okay, so We can't see the Warlock. He must be somewhere back there. And best case would be if the Warlock would actually summon um, the zombies around him. He's now summoning... Uh, that is... That is suboptimal. I mean, we can deal with them. 
That's not the issue. It it'll it'll just take additional time. Just realizing the warlock has five armor. Ah. So let's get this guy here down. Shut down for two so we can parry. And let's hope that the other uh, mech is simply going to use its rockets. At the same time, we're going to go and put uh, the ghost away because the ghost unfortunately doesn't have um, immunity to explosions and I forgot did he yeah he gains uh, he gains health when other enemies take damage so we got to kill the uh, robotic units first once they're done his mechlord ability is gone he will not take melee damage oh, this will not matter this will not matter this here matters as long as other enemies are there. Would be great if he if if we can make one of the the robots actually use his grenades. Because not only does uh, the chosen take double damage, uh, it'll also shred his armor. Which then will make our fight easier, because five armor. <coughs> because five armor uh, versus a pistol is just not a joke. We got another parry going. I don't want to put the ghost in danger. Could have put both of them right next to the mech. But there is a chance that the mech wouldn't die. It's going to use the second pair of rockets. Yeah, figure that. Yeah, no more rockets, so we can't uh, shred the warlock. It's a bit lamentable. The mech is shut down, so not much for us to do. I'm still asking myself the question how we're going to kill the warlock. He has way too much armor. This is going to be incredibly tedious. Melee immunity is... is stupid. Like, melee is already the... the weakest of all attack forms. 
why would you even consider giving something immunity to it, complete immunity to it? Not even... Uh, Melee suffers from position problems. I'm not even going to start that rent. It, it's not worth it. We could amplify. Not sure if that makes it. Uh, I mean, that deals a lot of damage. 12 to 18. It deals less damage, but over a longer period of time. I think the amplification is not bad. We're not going to use Iconic Storm yet. I want to start with Volt. Seven points of damage. Yeah, it's okay. Hmm. I think the Volt damage is more efficient. We dealt 14 points of damage and we're rapidly losing our focus. One way of regaining it is essentially moving away. One way of regaining it is essentially moving away, letting him summon monsters. Another option is we, if we could get him to here and stun strike him off of the ledge, that's an insta kill as well. By thinking about that, hmm, hmm, let me think that through. Invert. Cost one focus. Well, well, well. I think you have mispositioned. Goodbye. You shitting me? Okay, so here's the deal. Pushing things off the uh, the edge normally works. I will need to make an assessment why this specific case hasn't worked. Lesson learned. You can always learn another lesson in XCOM. It would have been a hilarious insta kill. What are you even talking about? Our troops only live once. We're pretty good. I still have 43 hit points left. Just need to refill our uh, focus. And I do have an idea how we can achieve that. We're going to go to a position where the chosen zombies can't immediately
get up to so our blade storm is not instantly wrecking them and then we're going to use that position Good, summon your zombies. Okay, he does not want to simply summon them. All right, I get it. He's in full cover. I, I mean, realistically speaking, I can't really dodge from any of his um, shots anyways so maybe we get a crit that's a solid two points of damage thanks to amplify He will now continue to mind control and mind scorch me for the entirety of the remaining time. And unless he uses his very unfortunate uh, gun, <laughs> we're going to slowly but surely whale him down. Oh my god, I'm I'm trapped in a horror scenario. Arranged only battle with a Templar. My learning is I should have simply used all of uh, the focus that we had and just maximize our damage that we would have dealt to him. Ionic Storm deals extra damage to them. So that would have been an option. <laughs> oh, this is so ridiculous. I wish I could even say that I'm pretty confident because we have more hit points. We don't. Like, he started with more hit points. And if he actually did he lands a hit, probably going to take more damage than two. Well... I wouldn't even say that. We do have Reflect, Deflect, and we also have 100% Dodge. It's actually not that bad. <sighs> I mean, and here you are in a difficult spot because the Templars armor also has one slot and one slot only for utility items. Elsewise, I would have probably used, um, in all seriousness, I would have probably used um, armor breaking rounds, ignoring four points of uh, armor. They even work for his handgun. But I seriously think that the handgun was never intended to be an actual feature. It's more an excuse 
uh, you when you can't go in uh, with the Templar that you at least have something to do. I know you can get all of the extra skills um, and sometimes it's good having a lightning hand and being able to take the extra shot. All of that is fine. But if you really think about it, the gun is even so much worse than the sidearm of the sniper. Mind you, the sidearm of the sniper, if it had zero updates, you would probably seldomly just take the shot. Um, only if you don't want, if you are fighting against uh, things that are close, because you don't want the range penalty of uh, the um, of the sniper. But if you wouldn't have fan fire, quick draw, um, and all of the pistol abilities, you simply wouldn't use uh, the the gun. Like why would you? There is no point in it. Okay, I'm going to speed this one here up. I don't want to waste 20 minutes of your viewers' time. I'll be back once we have... Uh, he's just going back and forth and back and forth. So I'll be back once we have a solution. So fast forward about 25 minutes in. Uh, we've taken a single hit and we're about to finally finish the Warlock. There we go. And that is the end of the mission. It was a pretty long and grindy mission. However, the overall kind of performance of Hogbite was positive. Uh, we almost took no damage short of uh, the gatekeeper and that was because we decided to stay a bit closer. Learn something, uh, kill 70 enemies and it only took us 70 turns to get through the entirety. So well done, good job. And with that and the knowledge that we have just killed 255 enemies we have gathered the psionic gate, a couple of uh, additional corpses, and even more important, we found ourselves um, done with another uh, mission on the Golden Path. We now need to spawn an avatar and kill it. We probably need to uh, do a few more Psylab um, research projects. We're almost uh, out of research here anyways, short of the lost uh, autopsy. So yeah, the, that, that should be good to go. We have a long way in front of us. Uh, now that we have cleared all of uh, the missions, there isn't too much from a golden path that we need to do. At some point we need to spawn the uh, the avatar and I'm thinking that we might be able to do that in one of our adventure defense missions uh, it's easier to sneak in uh, a school check in those missions and essentially use our defense matrix to kill the avatar I think that's a sleazy uh, but yet clever way of dealing with it sometimes there are codices on those missions and just getting the avatar there uh, mm, ticks that box. Yeah, then we simply need to do both of the research projects and I think we're then already at the Network Tower mission, which is the second last mission before ending the game. So the only question that we have to answer when going into uh, those missions is, oh, wait a second, here's a UFO. I don't want to be shut down, so we're definitely going to fly somewhere very very different so the only question that we need to answer ourselves is how strong does hogbite need to be he's currently out of order i think and yeah there are a couple of missions which i would want him to be on three more days he's lightly wounded so we're just going to wait because at this point here almost all of uh, the stuff 
re revolves around him. The reason why we're doing Covert Ops missions is to make him stronger. So I don't want to waste too much time on other soldiers, to be honest. Yeah. Anyways, I'll play a bit more offline because I think the grinding part isn't so interesting. I'll maybe tune in uh, one or two interesting missions, an Avenger defense mission or so, just to get a bit of the flair. And elsewise, I hope that I can make good progress so we uh, can actually go for the last few missions. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed at least and can appreciate the challenge, leave a comment down below um, and hit the like button. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye bye.